Hi, I'm Mark Rubin. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. Now, before we go and clutter up this boat with thwarts and things like that, we're going to take care of floorboards. Now, floors in a boat usually are not the boards you stand on. Floors are usually structural members that connect together the keel and the frames. Uh, and the thing you stand on usually is called a sole. But that's in larger craft. In smaller boats, we would just call them floorboards, or some people call them duckboards. And the purpose of them is really just to get you up off the bottom of the boat a little bit uh, so that you can keep your feet dry in case there's a bit of water sloshing around in there. But also, in a lot of craft, the planking can be a little bit fragile and not suitable for walking on, such as a typical lap strike boat. Also, the ribs and frames inside the bottom of the boat are a bit small and awkward to walk on, and so we apply floorboards to those to make it just easier to make use of the boat. Now, in the Bushi Dory, we're going to make some nice solid floorboards that just drop into place in between the floors. And I like that because it makes them easily removable, which makes maintenance and cleaning a lot easier. Now I'm afraid I don't have complete footage of this whole process, but we'll do our best to fill in the blanks. So let's get right down to it. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing for floorboard. I started out with a seam down the middle, which I've never quite liked. I think it, it helps to have a central plank down the center, sort of mimics what a keel does. And in my opinion, sort of makes the whole thing look a lot better. So we're going to do that. And uh, what I've got here is a couple cleats across the bottom that are going to elevate these uh, floorboards or duck boards, some people call them. And I've got a couple cleats here that are the, uh, the combined thickness of the door skin and the cleat make up for the finished floorboard thickness. So I'm just making these patterns so they generally fit tight, but the finished product is going to be um, built so that it's just a little bit on the loose side. You don't want floorboards too tight. I think they should be able to sort of come in and go out without any trouble whatsoever. Um, you never know if you get a hole in the boat or something, you need to get them out of your way quickly to address that while you're underway, of course, I'm referring to. And the last thing in the world you want is to be wrestling with a floorboard that has been made a little too snug. So it may not look as, as um, you know, craftsman-like to have a looser fitting floorboard. I think it is a more practical choice to make. So once I have my spiling or pattern, I'm going to lay it on the stock they're going to work with transfer all the dimensions I can from that spiling onto the stock, and then I connect the dots with the ship's curve. Now the shapes on this ship's curve may not match the boat exactly, so what I like to do is put that part back in the boat and then quickly scribe the exact shape onto that part so that I can get a more accurate and better looking result. The most common method of scribing is just using a set of dividers. Um, I find this can be a little bit difficult to sort of manage in terms of keeping the orientation the same. I tend to go with something that's just a little bit more straightforward and I'm just going to use the pencil I have in my apron here and my, and my folding rule. And I'm just going to put these guys together and just run this down here along like that. And what I get is I don't get very much that comes off of here. Certainly I'm not going to take that to the saw to cut it. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're working with shadow lines here to help hide what the, what's going on. And any um, imperfect fit can be tweaked just by modifying this upper edge and how you, uh, how you see it. So I'll go and tweak that shape up and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, now it's important to make sure you're keeping in mind where your orientation is. I'm just going to take my pencil here and I'm just going to give myself a mark about a third of the thickness of this piece of wood here. So it's maybe 3 16 of an inch. Now over to the bandsaw. Okay, over here I've set the table on the bandsaw to an angle that represents the, the angle between the bottom and the sides of the boat. So what I'm doing is I'm following my pencil line here. I'll darken that up. 
The pencil line is my guide for the bandsaw. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bevel off the back edge of this so that this can this bevel lies against the planking. And then back here at the bench, I'll just use a block plane to smooth off that sawn edge. And then we can also round over this inside corner here too. So I'm just gonna put sort of a, maybe about an eighth of an inch round over on there. This is easier to do with a block plane than it is to mess around with a router to do. Okay, those are ready to go into the boat. Now I'm nominally using quarter inch spacers here, but quarter inch is just a little on the large side for these gaps. And um, I've got it set up so that I actually cut these just ever so slightly oversized. That allows for a little bit of tuning, but it also allows me to just sort of tweak these by eye to a nicer size, a nicer gap size. So we're gonna go down to maybe 3 16 perhaps is a nice looking size. And then here at the outside edge, um, we really want the, these boards to sort of capture this in place and keep it from sliding around too much. So we don't want too much extra play from side to side, but overall an eighth of an inch from one side to the other is probably not a terrible idea or even a quarter of an inch overall is probably a nice margin. We do want to be able to get these in and out very easily without a lot of fussing around. Don't forget there's going to be a thwart in place here and another one over here. So you have to lift it out and sort of negotiate it a little bit, spin it around. If it's too tight, uh, that could be a problem. Now what you might notice is I've made the bulk of these boards the same width, but as I get to the margin board, what I did was in the case of say the, the ones fore and aft, if I had made those the same width as well, I would have ended up with this little tiny triangle that would be very difficult to deal with. So I've made these forward margin boards wider. And in fact, they were pre previously cut the same as the rest, but when I was doing the cutting on these, I basically took the, one of the waste, little waste corner from one end, flipped it over and glued it onto this back edge here. You don't really see the seam because it's made out of the same material and the grain really matches up nicely. And uh, it just widens that out a little bit and makes for an easier thing to install. So the only thing left to do here is round over the edges. I've got a few knots to deal with and uh, I'm using knotty cedar here for a couple of reasons. A, there's you know some economy in using a lesser grade of cedar for this particular application. And I kind of feel like floorboards in a boat are sort of sacrificial. And by using a lesser grade material, it makes them less precious. You're not gonna be upset when you drop something in here and it dings the surface. And, and these knots and other imperfections really kind of mask any of the damage that might happen to them over their lifespan. And so I think that's kind of a good thing. It also allows me to use up some scrap in the shop that wasn't getting used in anything else. In fact, it's not none of it's even scrap. This is freshly purchased material. But instead of going to my Sawyer and purchasing uh, high-grade clear stuff, I can go to my local lumber yard and just pick up fencing boards. And that's what these are. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dressing these mating edges here. 
and then we'll be actually gluing these down onto my cleats on the back side. And uh, the main reason for gluing is just it's a fast way to get them in place. And then I'm going to be fastening separately with mechanical fasteners. We'll use ring nails. But it's far easier to put a blob of glue on those cleats, drop these in place, get the joints all sort of lined up nicely, and then Put a little bit of weight on it and walk away and then when I come back I can lift the whole panel out and I can trim these edges to uh, meet up nicely so I'm going to leave them rough the way they are right now and then I'll treat them all at once with one cut and then I can round those edges over and we can think about finger holes. Now these knots I need to deal with, these, a couple of these are loose knots and so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these out and we'll just we'll glue in a wooden plug into all those larger loose knot holes. The smaller tight ones we're not going to do anything with. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'll pull the weights and spacers out. While they're still in place I'm going to mark how I want to trim them. So I'm just going to carefully lift these out here. Here you can see the cleats that I made on the back side and the spacers I used to align the cleats. These little spacers here, the cleats were just butted up against them so that they were consistent. Now before I do anything I'm going to go and nail these together because right now it's just some adhesive holding these right now. I'm just going to mark the edge of those cleats on the back side there. and give myself an offset so that I'm nailing in the center of the cleat. There we go. Now I'm going to pre-drill for my fin my nails here. I'm going to be using ring nails and I could get away with not pre-drilling but it makes it a whole lot easier and I'm just going to give myself a one inch offset. One inch from the edge of each of these. What I'm using for a pilot drill here is actually just a finishing nail that's been ground to a triangular drill point. And then this little, this little piece of dowel that's sort of a depth stop. And for smaller nails, that's really effective. I'm assembling these with one inch ring nails. Okay, now I need to trim these down and because you have this cleat on the back side it makes trimming them a little tricky. So what I've got is I've got a piece of scrap that is the same material as these cleats. Put a little dog clip on there to keep it from going anywhere. And this basically acts like a little riser on the table saw fence. You could do it without this clamp on there but this piece of stock is just going to slide off with the rest of the work. So this way it stays in place as I trim this off. It works really nicely. I want to thank all my subscribers for their ongoing support, their comments, their shares, and good wishes. 
And I also want to thank all of my followers on Patreon whose monthly pledges support this channel. If you can help us on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. There are links in the corner or down in the description. All right, we'll leave any final sand until after I get these little plugs glued in. So that'll be my next job on this, just getting glue into these guys here. Okay, I gotta put some little finger holes into these floor panels so that they can be lifted out. So I've made this little jig here. Um, this is gonna be guiding a router with a flush trim bit. And so I've just drawn my finished hole size that I have right here. And I've thrown in a couple of nails that are offset from the center line that match up with the width of these little of the planks on here. So I've got a center line here that I use for lining things up. There's the other center line. When I did this, I just drilled two holes, then I just ran this in on the bandsaw to waste away the center of it. So it's pretty straightforward. In order to use this, first thing I've got to do is rough in a hole. So I just calculate where the center of my plank is here. I can take my little jig, and drop it on there. There's my center line. I just slide this down until I'm lined up on it. And if you're not 100% in the center, it's probably not going to make much of a difference for these. You likely aren't going to notice it. And I've got a backing board here just to help prevent blowout. And I've taken a, I've got a Forstner bit that's about a eighth of an inch smaller than my finished hole size. take a saber saw here and I'm just going to knock out the, the rough uh, middle of this here. I don't need to be very fine with that because the router is going to take care of finishing up that hole. All right, so for the next part of this, I'm using a couple risers to get this up higher off the table. Just going to drop my jig on there line it up and then I'll use a clamp to clamp it down at one end. I'll make sure that doesn't go anywhere so it might not be a terrible idea to be able to get a to get a clamp on both sides. If I can get this one to reach that'd be nice. Nope. I've set up a template bit on my laminate trimmer, so that means it's got a ball bearing down here near the near the top of the cutter, as opposed to down on the bottom. Now you might have noticed I was mostly going in the opposite direction that you should with the router. And that's because I wanted to use a climbing cut. Because of all the end grain in those holes, I'm going to get a smoother finish without risk of tear out by using a climbing cut. Okay, now I've got a 3 16 radius round over bit, so we'll use that just to soften up this hole on both sides. We're just going to finish these up with just a tiny bit of sanding. 
There's nothing so mechanical as the finish you get from a router bit. Just a little bit to give it a human touch makes all the difference. And just a quick little Given these the once over with the orbital sander. But I just want to I just want to touch it up by hand before I'm done. Just try and hit those little sharp corners first. ready for oil. Now it's time to oil the floorboards. Now the simplest oil I can use is just plain boiled linseed oil. And we'll usually thin that out with some solvents of some sort, either turpentine or mineral spirits, and we'll thin them out 25 to 50%. Now sometimes we use something called boat sauce or boat soup. And that is a shop made concoction that comprises linseed oil, thinners, and usually something else, either pine tar or in some cases varnish. I'll mix it with varnish when I want something that's going to have a harder, clearer finish for on oars or paddles or something like that. And I'll use pine tar if I want it to be very flexible and longer lasting. Now you can use a combination of pine tar and varnish to get a little bit of the best of both worlds. Now the ratios you mix those up in depend on you. And one simple recipe is called the one, two, three recipe. And you can use this either way you want. Either you can go with three parts solvent, two parts oil, one part pine tar or varnish or combination of, or you can flip that around. You could use like three parts varnish, two parts oil, one part solvent. And the ratios that you use are going to affect the results, of course, but they all work. If you go with more varnish, you're gonna get a very flexible varnish. If you go with more solvent, you're gonna get a more penetrating finish. It's gonna be thinner in its film, but it's probably gonna be faster to dry. Anyway, that's something you can play around with in the shop and see what kind of results you get. I'll drop the floorboards in. And one little detail I do is I put a little arrow on the bottom side of this. And that just shows the orientation of these floorboards because they only fit in one spot. They just drop in nice and easy like that. I really like that. I don't mind the fact that these floorboards are, are flat sawn primarily. I think it adds some character to the boat. Drilling out the loose knots I think was a good idea. The plugged knots don't really stand out in any way that's um, bothersome to me. The decision to go with a wide plank here at both ends where I would have otherwise had a little tiny piece I think was a good one and it blends together well. All in all, I'm quite happy with these floorboards. I think they're gonna work out really nicely in the long run. They drop in nice, they're not too heavy, will be easy to maintain, and relatively easy to replace when the time comes to do that. If this were a round bottom boat, there's a good chance you'd have to spring the floorboards into place, in which case you would wanna fasten those down in some way. What I don't believe in doing is actually screwing floorboards into place because I feel it encourages people to not deal with maintenance. If you've got to start taking too many things apart in order to clean the boat, it's just not going to happen. So I really much prefer putting a little extra time into making something that's easily removable and then the boat gets taken care of properly. Because when you don't, you have to assume people are going to default to their uh, laziest habits generally. So it's our job as builders to try and do as much as we can to undermine that. All right, that's it for today, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and I want to thank everybody on Patreon who helped support this channel. If you can help us out on Patreon, I really appreciate that. You can find a link in the corner or down in the description. And over on Patreon, all of these videos come out with sort of a short article that expands on some aspect of the build, 
and uh, it covers some material that we don't discuss in the video. So if that's of interest to you, join us over there. So until next time, keep your stick on the ice. We just used that recently, didn't we? Catch you later. See you later, folks. Get off your duffs. Go get your hands dirty. Catch you next week.